Hello everyone, Kala Kanad here for Woodwork Web. Boy, if you could see me now. Oh man, this is Halloween and the video we're going to do today is not so much about the process of making something, it's more about the process of getting other people, especially kids, involved in woodworking. And what we're going to show you today is some processes that you can use to help get your grandkids, your children, nephews, nieces, all of those people involved in woodworking in a very fun and easy way. One of the nice things about Halloween is it's a fun time for everybody. It's a time that you get to decorate and look at all of the neat things that you can make. There's the only orange bat you'll ever see, but there's all sorts of neat things. And these, you can make these for lawn signs or lawn ornaments or window ornaments, all sorts of things. Now, you can get these things, you can buy them at the dollar store, but isn't it a lot more fun to make them yourselves? And you can make them on a scroll saw, and it's really easy to get kids involved with it because it's a fun thing, and it's something that involves them. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, I can't draw nice pumpkins like this, and skulls, and I don't have the artistic ability, but guess what you can do? You can go to the dollar store and buy all of these things, check this out, all of this neat stuff, look at this, these things are, you can't buy patterns even on the internet for that, look at that, that's a box, buck and a quarter, same thing there, and those are all great patterns, this is a package of things that you're supposed to put on your window, but look at it, it's just full, it's a whole package full of all sorts of patterns, look at there's the there's the spider and there's a couple of them. There's the spider web. There's the, the cat and there's a couple of those as well. There's the bat and there's a couple of those. I'll try and hold them up so you can see them. So there's your patterns. All you need, and you don't even need good wood. You know, if, you're, if you don't have any scrap wood, any scrap plywood or something around, you can go to your local plywood store and buy door skin material. It's pretty cheap. It's really easy to use on a scroll saw, and all you need is a little bit of black paint or orange paint, and these things will now last a lifetime instead of one season and you're back to the dollar store or wherever you're getting them from. So that's the process that we're going to take you through today. How you can, the things that you can do that you can get your kids, your grandkids, your next door neighbor kids, families, nephews, all of them involved in woodwork for something that they are going to appreciate. Now before we head off to the workshop to the scroll saw, I want you to look at something very close. Let me zoom in. Right up here, let me zoom in. Right here, right here, look closely, look closely, right here. Right here, get you have to lean into the you have to lean into the screen a bit. Right there, right there. Look at right there. <laughs> and here we go, off to the workshop to do some scrolling. Okay, here we are back in front of the scroll saw, and for this project, we just have a little something fairly simple to get us started. And I'm not going to show you the whole thing that I do on the scroll saw, but I want you to see that I've used felt pen so that it's easy to go around, it's easy to follow the lines on this. And there's our little completed, uh, this is a little bat, and, and ideally we'll want to paint this black and uh, it'll stand out. We can use it for all sorts of different things. Now we're going to try something a little bit more complex. This next project in, is a, uh, obviously a spider's web, and again I've done it in black felt pen so that you can actually see the outlines, and it's easier to follow, especially for kids, 
Uh, and this doesn't, we're not doing any terrific detail here, so it doesn't matter that our lines are a little bit thicker here. But we'll show you, we'll zoom in for a second here, and you notice that there's a lot of little squares in the middle here, and all of those need to be cut out. And the way we do that is we release the blade in the scroll saw, and we actually poke it through that little hole, and then we can actually then just cut out that little piece in there. So we're going to be doing that in every one of these cases, and I'm not going to do this entire thing on video because it's a little bit tedious, but I'm going to get it started so that you see what the process is and how easy it is to do with this saw by just simply releasing the blade and poking that little blade through. With this scroll saw, basically all we need to do is release the tension on the blade, and we do that by turning this, and you can see how it ease the, the pressure on the blade, and we just simply undo this little nut here, and we can now put this through one of these holes here. There we go. There's our first one. Put the blade back in, tighten it up, and reset, and you can see that that's yeah, let's put that blade up a little higher. There we go. And we'll reset that tension. That's good. Turn the blade back on. And we're ready to start cutting. Then we just move along to the next piece. So this is the process of making these kinds of woodworking projects. In this case, I'm going to be putting the little blade through each one of these holes, and I'm going to do all this off camera so that you don't watch this, but when I come back, we'll show you what the finished product looks like, and then we'll be ready for painting. So that didn't take too long to do. We went along and did the inside of every one of these, and now we just need to paint them. And now we've got a couple more that we can do something with, and we can start putting these into some sort of a Halloween theme uh, decoration. Well, we're back from the scroll saw, and we've actually gone ahead and painted one side of these. We, didn't, we haven't painted both sides because where we're going to be using these, we only need them to be one-sided. But what I wanted to talk about is the paint. Sometimes you can buy discounted paints at uh, different places, and if you can buy it in a can, it's usually a lot cheaper. If you're only going to be using a little bit of it, you can buy it in a spray can. They're four, five, six bucks, depending on the quality. And if you're doing small numbers of them, it's really easy to use uh, a little spray can of like an orange paint because you're probably not going to use a lot of it. Black, of course, we all use a lot of anyway, uh, but orange we probably don't use a lot of, so you might want to get that in a spray can. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of highlighting, and this is all part of the process of finishing woodworking and then finishing the woodworking and we're going to do a little bit of highlighting just to make these stand out a little bit more and this is all part of the process that you can get your your kids your grandkids uh, aunts and uncles nieces nephews everybody can get involved in this and participate in this sort of fun Halloween and one of the fun processes of doing this is when kids get to do some a little bit of painting afterwards and they can't even do anything wrong because it's just 
Halloween decoration. If you don't like it, you just paint over top of it. And all we're doing really is doing putting some highlighting on here. They might want to use some glitter paint or anything else just to get them involved in this whole process of woodworking and making something a little bit more substantial than a, a paper decoration that you buy from the, the dollar store. Now, you can use all sorts of different color paints and I've got some black and some white here. Oh, I should show you this thing here. This is a uh, something I stumbled across. What a neat little rig. Now, this isn't what it's meant for. It's, it's actually, I have borrowed it from my, my painting supplies, but uh, what it is, is, uh, we'll just put this down here. Typically, you would have this as a storage for your, uh, for your paint. I, I always keep my paint in a, in a bucket, and it's a place that you can hold your brushes. It holds your brushes so that they're a place for them to dry, and even a place for your roller and you just stick it on there and now you've got a place for your paint supplies to uh, to dry and, and to keep them from getting crushed and crumbled and rusty and all sorts of things. So neat little rig, we'll put a, a link on for that, but I'm actually reusing it now for this because I'm finding that this is a, a handy little rig for holding my different colored paints on here and not getting them dripping and rolling, rolling all over my, my cabinet. But when you get the kids involved in this, you start doing all sorts of different things and putting highlights and pumpkins of course have, have different um, ribs on them and you can make them stand out a little bit better by putting some of those things in there or not. It's just a process of keeping, keeping them involved and, and giving them something to do and being a little bit more creative. And that's really what we can do with Halloween is use it as an instrument to help get other people involved in woodworking in a pretty easy way and a fun way so that they can actually see the results and actually be part of the results. I'm going to carry on painting here and finish up these decorations, but this video is really about getting other people involved in woodworking, and I'm going a bit batty here trying to come up with some ideas, so now it's time for you to take over and get your kids, your grandkids, uh, other people involved in woodworking in a process that they can actually see and do something in a way that they're actually going to be able to use the product. So it's much more meaningful to them when they can do something that they can actually use and see and show off to their friends. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.